Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying differentiality lecture one and we'll be talking about basic definitions and solving certain problems. Okay, so let's begin a lecture with the basic definition of differentiality and I'm assuming that you all have gone through this back in your 11th and 12th class, right? But let's redefine and reiterate it formally once again over here. Now, whenever we hear the term derivative, it always related to rate of something, rate of change of slope, rate of change of y with respect to x, rate of change of flow of water, flow of something, rate of change of volume, etc. But in this lecture, let's focus on the slope part. That is rate of change of y with respect to x. Okay. And now let's take two examples. One is this curve, fx, and one is this straight line, y equals to mx plus c. Okay. Now what is the property of straight line? Property is slope is constant for every single point, right? So that's why we can calculate the slope with the help of this delta x and delta y, basically average method that would give us delta y by delta x. This is our slope, right? This length is delta y, this length is delta x, and we can calculate the average slope between these two points for this line because slope is constant everywhere. So that's why we can deploy this method. Okay. But can we use that for this particular curve? fx no we cannot at this point slope is like this one at this point slope is like this one tangent is like this one right so we cannot do this method for this one because at every single point slope is changing over here every single point slope was constant so now how do we calculate slope at a particular point so let's see how do we do that So we have this curve once again, and now we have taken two points. This point is A and this point is B over here. For this coordinate, X coordinate is A, for this X coordinate is small b, okay? So since this function is Fx, this value would be F of A, and this value would be F of B, right? Now we have to find out the average slope of this secant AB. What we are doing, we are finding average slope for the secant AB. For average, we can do the previous method which we used in straight lines, right? That was delta y by delta x, right? So slope would be delta y by delta x. Now over here, delta y would be FB minus FA and delta x would be B minus A. Now, this is the average slope of the secant. Now, what if I take this point B towards over here? Okay. Now, our secant looks like this one. Now, what if I move it further towards A? Let's say I keep it over here. This looks like this one. So, you can see that it is becoming closer to tangent at point A. As B is approaching towards A, this secant is becoming closer to tangent at A, right? We cannot definitely merge it with A only. We can keep it at such a point over here that distance between A and B is infinitesimally small, right? And now that distance between A and B has become so small, we have to use the limit concept to find out the slope at point A because they cannot meet, they cannot merge, but we have to find out the limiting value. What if they had merged, then what would have been the slope? So for that, what we have to do, we have to use the limit concept, right? So that's why we have studied limit earlier and not differentiability, okay? And now let's see how do we do that. So let's draw the curve once again. So this point is A and this point is B, which is very close. I'm not showing it to be close, but it's actually very close. Okay. So if point A is having X coordinate as A, and if A and B are infinitesimally very close, okay. In that case, this point should be A plus H, right? Makes sense. And this point is F of A. So this point would be F of A plus H, right? Makes sense. Now slope would be f of a plus h minus f of a plus h minus f a divided by a plus h minus a that becomes h only, right? Now, if you want to find out the limiting value, we have to apply limit h approaches zero so that we can find out the slope at a, right? Limiting value. So this becomes our derivative formula, okay? Now, important thing over here is we approached from right side over here. We approached, we basically we moved point B from 
right side towards a right so this is called as right hand derivative okay or also you can say that it is f dash a plus okay on the right side now similarly if point b was on the left side in that case we would have approached from left side that would have given us left hand derivative that would have meant f dash a minus okay now that formula would be a little different that formula would look like this one so right hand derivative is f dash a plus equals to limit h approaches 0 f of a plus h minus f a divided by h and left hand derivative would be f dash a minus limit h approaches 0 f of f a minus h minus f a divided by minus h okay so you have to remember these two formulas over here and now let's talk about existence of derivative so just like limits we say that right hand derivative rhd left hand derivative lhd equals to some finite value in that case we say derivative is existing right now geometrically speaking for a particular function at a particular point we always have a unique tangent right agreed with that now let's take one more function this is a straight line this is a straight line we have a discontinuity over here open circle and closed circle okay let's say this point is a so this is our a plus h this is our a minus h slope for this straight line is one slope for this straight line is one so we can say that this derivative is existing basically on the uh, left hand side uh, right hand side derivative is also existing that is equals to one and it's also finite so based on this basic definition we can say that derivative is existing but that's not true because we are getting two tangents so at this particular point we are getting one tangent over here and one tangent over here it's not giving us unique tangent so we understand that geometrically we're not getting a unique tangent over here so how do we do that mathematically we say that the basic condition for derivative to exist is the function should be continuous over here function is not continuous so before this particular condition function should always be continuous only in that case we apply this condition if function is discontinuous it's straight away non-derivable at that point okay so before applying this condition rhd equals to lhd equals to some finite value you have to check if the function is continuous or not if function is discontinuous it's straight away non-derivable at a particular point okay and now let's solve this example find the derivative of fx equals to mod nnx at x equals to 1 using all approaches okay so method 1 would be the basic one basically the first principle so we have to calculate f dash 1 plus and f dash 1 minus okay so f dash 1 plus would be limit h approaches 0 f of 1 plus h that would be modulus of ln 1 plus h right minus f of 1 that would be modulus of ln 1 okay divide by h now this becomes 0 only okay this becomes 0 so this becomes modulus of ln plus h ln 1 plus h now 1 plus h is something positive so ln would be positive only so we can open up this modulus right so that would give us limit h approaches 0 ln 1 plus h divided by h and we know that this limit is 1 when h is approaching 0 this limit is 1 only standard limit right so this becomes 1 only this comes out to be 1 and now let's calculate f dash 1 minus so that would give us limit h approaches 0 modulus of ln 1 minus h minus modulus of ln 1 divided by minus h so this becomes 0 only so this is 0 so what we are getting over here limit h approaches 0 now 1 minus h is less than 1 right so ln would be negative so this would open up as negative quantity so minus ln 1 minus h divided by minus h right now this limit ln of 1 minus h divided by minus h is 1 only right when h is approaching 0 so this limit would be 1 so answer would be minus 1 because we have a negative sign over here okay so we have got two different limits over here 1 and minus 1 so our rhd is 1 LHD is minus 1. So they are not equals. Hence, the derivative is not existing for modulus of LNX. Okay. Now, this was our first method. And now for the second method, we have to convert this function fx equals to modulus LNX into two parts. Basically, opening up this modulus. It would open either as positive or negative. Right. So for this one, x would be greater than or equal to 1. And for this one, x less than 1 and greater than 0, right? Now, if you want to find out the derivative, 
we have to just differentiate these functions individually. So that would be one upon x and minus one upon x, x greater than equals to one, x less than one, greater than zero, right? Now, when we have to find out right hand derivative over here, that would mean we have to refer to this particular derivative. Why? Because this is x greater than equals to one, and we have to calculate at x equals to one. So on the right side, we have to refer to this function. On the left side, we have to refer to this function. Okay. So right hand derivative would be one upon one only. That is one, and left hand derivative would be minus one upon one. That is minus one. So they are not equal. So that's why derivative doesn't exist for x equals to one. Okay. And now the third method is the graphical method, which is going to tell us if derivative is existing or not. But we're not going to calculate RSD and LSD. Okay. So let's see how it goes. So we have to plot modulus of ln x. We know that ln x looks like this. Okay. This is the graph of ln x. Now, if you want to take modulus of this one, we have to convert this negative into positive, right? For that, we have to use that mirror image concept, right? We have to place a mirror over here and take an image. Of this particular curve, negative curve. Okay, now this becomes modulus of ln x. Okay, now this particular curve, this becomes modulus of ln x. Okay, now we can see that on the right hand side slope is something of this sort, basically positive. On the left hand side slope is negative. On left hand side slope is negative. On right hand side slope is positive. So that's why they're not equal at this particular point. That is one. Okay. So that's why derivative is not existing at x equals to one for modulus of ln x, right? So we have discussed three methods to find out if the function is derivable or not. And now let us solve this question. Check the derivability of function at x equals to e f x equals to this piecewise function. Okay. So what we have to do? We have to find right hand derivative and left hand derivative and see if they are equal or not. So let's first find left hand derivative that is f dash e plus. Okay. That would be limit. H approaches zero, e plus h minus e multiplied by two raised power minus two upon e minus e plus h, right? Minus zero. That is f of e, right? F of e zero only divided by h. So this is f of e plus h. This is f zero divided by h, right? Now this e, this e gets cancelled out. This e, this e gets cancelled out. This negative, this negative gets cancelled out. So what we are left with? Limit h approaches zero. H multiplied by two raised power two by h divided by h. This h h gets cancelled out. We are left with two raised power two by h. That is infinity, right? Because h is approaching zero. So two raised power infinity is infinity only. So it does not exist, right? So we can simply say that without even calculating f e f dash e minus, we can simply say that this limit is not existing. So Differentiable. The, the function is not differentiable at e. Okay, not differentiable at x equals to e. Now let us solve this question. If f x is differentiable at x equals to zero and f dash a equals to one by four, find limit h approaches zero f of a plus two h square minus f of a minus two h square divided by h square. Now usually, questions of these kind of format are solved with the help of first principle. So our first principle is limit h approaches zero f of a plus h minus f a. Divided by h equals to f dash a plus, right? So this is the first part of first principle, right? We have the negative part as well. So let's see how to convert this into first principle format, right? So we have limit f of h approaches zero, f of a plus two h square minus f of a minus two h square divided by h square. So what we can do? We can add and subtract. F A in the numerator doesn't make a difference, right? Now this would become limit h approaches zero. Clubbing this with this one, so f of a plus two h square minus f a divided by h square, right? Minus f of a minus two h square minus f a divided by h square, right? These two becomes individual limits, right? Now we know that function is differentiable at x equals to a. Now this looks like f dash a plus, but here's the catch: we have we don't have two h square over here. So let's multiply by two in the numerator and denominator. Same over here, right? Now this becomes a proper f dash a plus, but we know that function is differentiable. So f dash a plus would be same as f dash a, right? 
so this becomes f dash a and now this becomes minus of f dash a minus right because for f dash a minus we should have a negative sign over here right we don't have a negative sign over here so this becomes negative of f dash a minus which is same as negative of f dash a so this becomes minus of minus f dash a okay whole multiplied by 2 so this becomes 2 times f dash a multiplied by 2 that is 4 f dash a and f dash a is 1 by 4 so this becomes 1 right and now let us talk about the last topic of today's lecture that is reasons for non-differentiability so the first reason is discontinuity if the function is discontinuous it's straight away non-differentiable right you don't have to do anything you have to mark it non-differentiable directly right second point is sharp turning points so we saw that in the example of modulus of ln x so it looked like something of this sort so this was a sharp turn in the function if that is the case we can say that function is non-differentiable at that point right modulus x function modulus x looks like this one right modulus x or any kind of modulus version of this function so it has sharp corner at x equals to zero so that makes it non-differentiable at x equals to zero now the third point is vertical slope let's say we have a function of this type it's going to infinity at x equals to zero so we can say that the slope is infinity over here but we know that in the basic definition of differentiability the limit value should always be finite value right so if that is not the case if it is having a vertical slope that is infinity in that case we can say that function is non-differentiable so these are the three key points based on which we can identify the function is differentiable or not okay so today's lecture was still here only and from the next lecture we'll be talking about algebra of differentiability and solve certain problems okay so let's meet in the next lecture thanks for watching